Hey, how's it going everyone? Mick here, welcome back to All About Tech. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you what I believe is the absolute best way to game on Apple Silicon-based devices. And I'm gonna be giving you my compelling reasons as to why it is better than other traditional methods that you may have been seeing recently on YouTube. So to kick this video off then, I've been seeing a lot of benchmarking and comparison videos between the different uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max SKUs that you can get uh, for the new MacBook Pros and seeing what kind of levels of gaming performance that you can get with uh, each of those different types of chips. I've been seeing recommendations being made where if you plan on doing Windows-based gaming through applications like Crossover and Parallels, then you absolutely need to get the M1 Max chip. And I'm here to tell you today that I believe that that is the, uh, the wrong thing to do. I don't believe you should be upgrading for the purposes of gaming. Um, and I'm going to be giving you my reasons why not, as well as what I think is the best reason and then giving you my reasons for that, for that, uh, for that, for my recommendation. There's three ways you can game predominantly on these new devices. You've got natively on Apple Silicon where the compatibility list of games is next to non-existent. And then you've got applications like Crossover and Parallels where it will translate the game to uh, Apple Silicon in order for the game to be run, albeit at a performance hit because you're having to go through those different layers of translation. Um, crossover is direct translation through macOS um, using Wine, and then Parallels is actually a virtualization platform where you run Windows 11 on ARM, and then uh, it goes through that translation process to go from x86 to ARM, and then from Windows-based ARM over to, to Apple Silicon. The reason why I don't recommend crossover and parallels is because one, for what they are, it's quite expensive. Crossover's around 60 pounds for a year's worth of updates or 400 pounds for a lifetime's worth of updates. And parallels is about 60 pounds again for their base um, based service where you get four CPU cores and eight gigs of memory. And then if you want to use the uh, all of the specifications of your Mac, uh, then you can go for the Pro Edition, which is $79.99, which gives you as much as, as what these machines allow, but that then becomes a yearly subscription. Now, what's already expensive are these new laptops themselves and for those that were recommended to buy the m1 max chip uh, to game through these platforms through these applications that's already at least a 700 pound upgrade the ram to 32 gigs which you have to take when you get an m1 max soc is 400 pounds and then the soc itself is around 300 pounds and then obviously if you plan on storing all these games then your only choice really is to upgrade your ssd as well which again the value for upgrading is terrible through apple um so i'm going to reveal to you now what my recommendation is for gaming on these machines what i'd recommend you do is invest some if not all of that money uh, into getting yourself a dedicated Windows-based gaming machine. Now, you don't have to go absolutely balls to the walls in terms of specs. At the end of the day, all you need to achieve is to be able to run a game at a smooth 1080, uh, 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second on all of your AAA modern games. Um, because what we're going to be doing in order to play them uh, on the MacBook Pros is we're gonna be using an application called Parsec, which is a remote streaming protocol application, which streams your gaming PC over to your MacBook Pro. And in the experience I've had, 
I believe it is a better experience than using parallels and crossover. Um, I believe the setup process is easier and I believe the overall experience gaming through these uh, through these applicate through the Parsec application is better in general and it's free to use. Now that I've given you what I recommend, I'm going to give you the reasons why I've recommended those. So reason number one, and that's value. I've already gone through how much the upgrade is for the M1 Max chip and for investing that money into a dedicated machine, you are getting an entire second machine. And again, you don't necessarily just have to use it for gaming. You can use it as a streaming um, device that you can still remote into. You can do all sorts of work on it if you need to. Um, and, 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 and yeah, from a value perspective, you've got a dedicated machine that's playing games natively. So you're having a lot less compatibility issues. And talking about compatibility then, that is the second big reason as to why I would do things this way. And that is instead of only being able to, being able to play select games through crossover and parallels, you will be able to play the vast majority of your, of your entire library, whether it be Steam, whether it be on Game Pass for PC, whether it be uh, on GOG, whether it be Epic Games Launcher, you'll be able to play the vast majority of your games on your Apple based MacBooks, but on but streaming it over the network. The, the amount of games you'll be able to play is infinitely better in that sense. Third reason why I would recommend this over uh, gaming natively on these machines, and that is battery life. So when you're playing games through crossover and through parallels, you've also got to remember that not only are they playing natively on the machine, which is going to use more processing power, but because you're going through that translation process as well, you're actually not being as efficient as what maybe these chips are designed to be. And with running the gaming PC on a separate machine and then streaming it over the network, the only thing that your PC is doing is sending an input signal for your controller and then uh, decoding the video signal that comes back. And these new MacBook Pros have really good encoding and decoding capabilities with their dedicated hardware for that. And yeah, battery life is absolutely fantastic because of that. So obviously we've spoken about the battery life benefits the value perspective of being able to build an entire machine for the price it costs to, to do um, a couple upgrades on your MacBook Pro. Um, again, and also talking about compatibility reasons for all of your games, another thing is the performance of Parsec itself. If I was to show you these clips of these games um, running uh, through Parsec, but if I didn't actually tell you the games were running through uh, through through the application and through and and over the network. I don't think people would be hard pressed if they uh, if 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 they then found out that the games weren't being played natively on the machine. Um, I will argue that the experience through Parsec is better than playing over crossover or parallels because the target here is to get solid 60 FPS performance um, with low latency and good image quality. Yeah, this machine does have a 120 hertz ProMotion display and you can stream over the network at 120 hertz if your network allows it. But I prefer, when I'm playing on my laptop, I'm not playing competitively anyway. It's when I'm playing games that ultimately look pretty and that I can chill on the sofa with on the uh, and plug it into my TV, or if I'm laying in bed and I'm just chilling with a controller playing some games. It's not me playing competitively, so I don't need that ultra high refresh rate. I want good visual fidelity, solid 60 FPS, and low latency for the controller. And if somebody handed me the laptop to play these games and they didn't tell me it was being streamed over the network and I didn't know about any of this, 
I I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to guess that it wasn't being played natively on the MacBook, especially when it comes to these new MacBook Pros with that mini LED display. Ooh, games do half look good on that display. In particular, the games like um, Destiny 2, where there's a lot of dark scenes where you can basically see the mini LEDs are doing exactly what you want them to, switching off, creating that really deep black uh, visual on the display. And I'll be completely honest with you, Destiny 2 looks better on that mini LED display being streamed over the network than it does on my uh, on my 27 inch gaming monitor, uh, which is 165 hertz, 1440p. Um, I'd prefer to play it on that mini LED display um, for if I wasn't playing competitively, that is because the experience is fantastic and the games look amazing. Forza Horizon 5 looks absolutely amazing. The Witcher 3 looks absolutely amazing. And a game like The Witcher 3, which absolutely struggles on the 16 inch, 16 core GPU of the M1 Pro with tons of stuttering through crossover, plays seamless 60 FPS at 1200p resolution, just still being able to get that taller aspect ratio, make the most out of that screen and play seamlessly over the network. And my final uh, benefit that I think is, and, th and this is the real kicker here, and that is that you don't need the expensive M1 Pro or M1 Max laptops in order to benefit from this. If you've got an M1 MacBook Air, if you've got a 13 inch MacBook Pro, if you've got an M1 Mac Mini, obviously that's not portable, so that's kind of beyond the point. But as long as you've got one of these Apple Silicon based Macs that have the, the, those good uh, decoding capabilities, because the M1, the base M1 devices have decent decoding as well, um, you can get a base M1 MacBook Air if you don't need the extra power for all your productivity and professional workflow and still get a fantastic experience streaming over the network with Parsec. What I will say with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it's worth upgrading to that for the display alone. I think the display on this is absolutely crazy good. It is, it just looks so good. But like I said, you don't need to have an expensive device in order to achieve this. Um, so yeah, those are my reasons why I believe Parsec is the best way to game on Apple Silicon. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I know some people are going to be triggered and say, oh, you're not playing on, you're not playing natively on the MacBook, it's cheating. But if the experience, if you're not hindered, in any sort of way by doing it this way instead of crossover and parallels um, because bear in mind that those software applications cost a pretty penny in comparison to Parsec which is absolutely free to use and it's infinitely more useful in my opinion um, as well as having another dedicated machine that will be able to allow you to play the vast majority of your games a hell of a lot more than what you would be able to play natively on the uh, on on your apple silicon based devices so i've been mick from all about tech i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like comment down below your thoughts as always and i'll catch you guys out in the next video bye for now